<laughs> okay, so um, it's time to make ginger cookies. And the thing about ginger cookies, the number one thing people don't know, I assume, is that you're supposed to add some fruit because you don't have anything to compare flavor to the ginger and texture, then it's just ginger in your eyeballs and soul, you know? So that's not so good. I'm gonna be using a little bit of peach cobbler, hemperoonies. This stuff is so nice. It makes me relax for a little while and then pop back to my feet after like half an hour. It's so nice. So we're just gonna Welcome to this put a little bit of that in there. Space. The ginger's already gonna hit me hard, so we don't want too much more of that. This is a whole, this is a double recipe, so it's four cups of flour. Um, all right, to sweeten it out, because I think ginger cookies are too, you know, gingery without enough sweets, so I'll add some monk fruit, super sweets. Just put a bunch of droplets in there, 20 droplets or whatever that was. All right, so for the, um, Molasses, I have this Aunt Patty's unsulfured molasses, and if you notice, it forms these crystals around in there, and it's more liquidy. Um, and it has a way stronger flavor, like sweeter, like five times sweeter than your common black strap molasses. Um, so that's amazing. I really like this stuff. Um, let's see here, that calls for. Only a quarter cup of molasses, so I'm doubling it, so it'd be half or half a cup. Molasses is pretty strong. I'll just pour it right in there. Who cares? A little bit of that. It really taints the cookies quick. Alright. We'll put a little date syrup with it too for additional flavor. Because it's so tasty. There we go. Alright, and now for the risin, look at this. I'm using my ginger beer. I mean, it does have a little bit of, uh, like chili pepper, but, you know, so what? <laughs> um, I guess I'll mix them together now. Let's do this. Should you just add it in for me? Yeah, usually you. Got me steady, man. Mixy, mixy. If it's too thick, I'll probably uh, use um, some hemp oil or something to thin it out. I better fold it over with a different spoon. This one will work. Oh yeah, I love the way it clumps up. Like, you know when you're mixing for your baking, you know it's gonna be a good recipe when like the flour, you can like feel the grittiness and the like moisture mixing through the spoon like it's a vibration, you know? Like you're in tune with your creation. Oh yeah, trust me. Those harmonious frequencies. Yep. Pretty much, all right, let's add a little bit of ginger beer. Get finished up. Yeah. Oh, I did like these. Those are some tasty looking cookies. They're mighty fine. Yeah. I love it. All right. Uh, that's, just, that's perfect. I mean, those are the cookies of your dreams. Um, yeah, let's move over here. And uh, see how these cookies turn into uh, a little presentation here.
People usually make, what do they say, little dough balls and then they flatten them when they're making these type of cookies. People usually use forks. I don't know if you want them flat or not. I was going to experiment and put a little bit of ground ginger on a few and see how horrendous it tastes. <laughs> it's probably way too strong. It's so bad. Cruelty. You have unleashed. Maybe I'll have to sprinkle some sugar on there too if I do that. Alright, we'll try a few with it. Alright, we got none, I guess. All right, this recipe, I didn't follow it exactly because of the ginger beer risin. So, of course, you don't put baking soda because it's nasty. Um, so, what I did is I uh, put slightly less oil. And um, that pretty much did it. Like, then I put some other, you know, sweet spices than it recommends. Like, I put a little bit extra of those. But the point is, um, a little bit less oil and a little bit of the, uh, yeah, like a quarter of a cup less oil. So, like I was saying, uh, with the fruit and the, um, like, because there's so much ginger of different types, but the fruit and, like, the monk fruit concentrate kind of offsets the, um, spiciness and the spiciness you see because I put a little bit less ginger and more types of ginger and then that spiciness of the ginger beer with those other ingredients with the citrus and everything it has and cardamom really adds holy cow is it delicious like and you don't get that punch like with most ginger cookies where it like festers in the back of your throat and strangles the punching bag slowly you're know, hanging on you know Instead, it's like smoothed out and enriched. It's so amazing. Yeah. What do you think? This is the full ginger experience. They're good. Um, I'm just kind of used to them actually being so strong that they kill me. So. Yeah, this this balanced. This is this is how you would want your ginger quite cookie. A ginger snappy, which. Yeah. It's okay, but... You like him ginger snappy, I know. Yeah. yeah, I could do him differently, but this is how I like him, so... <laughs> I'm satisfied. So after letting him chill overnight, I popped him back in the oven at 350, and then immediately turned the oven off so they would just cool in there and dry out over a couple hours. And now they're like classic ginger snaps that Grant likes. So that's yeah, what you do yeah. to perfect them, and then you can dip them in milk. You have a little bit of a harder edge. I guess they're soft in the middle still a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. There you go. It's a lot better, yeah. yeah.